have this mic on? Uh, just because I figure it's ADR session and I sound like Tom Waits, so I need to know that I can. <laughs> just before we get started, um, actors, um, put some water up here for you guys. So just help yourself, and I'll keep an eye on that, make sure that it's full. And again, just when you when you are in a scene, come forward up center front. Okay. Thank you. My Inventions by Robert Holbrook. Fade in. New York City, 1943, day. A gray winter's day in snowbound Manhattan. It is late morning, and the big city is alive with the usual hustle and bustle of a teeming civilization. Super title. Who makes Olympus sure the gods united? That power of man the poet has revealed. Faust. Hotel New Yorker, day. 40-story Art Deco Hotel in Midtown Manhattan. January the 8th, 1943. A hotel maid pushes her trolley through the long and winding hallways, making a beeline for a room at the end of a dim and narrow corridor, room 3327. She knocks, despite the sign on the handle, do not disturb. Housekeeping, Mr. Tesla? Mr. Tesla? She waits a moment, no answer. She finds the proper key and cautiously opens the door. The maid peeks in. The two windows of the large suite are wide open through the dark curtains, though the dark curtains are shut and blowing in the breeze, allowing snippets of light here and there. The maid spots a prone shape on the bed. Mr. Tesla, it's not like you to sleep so late. She cautiously enters, makes her way through the unidentifiable shapes and clutter. Something mysteriously feathery is silhouetted for an instant. You'll catch your death of cold. She crosses the room and throws open the curtains, closes a window, and turns to the room. She gasps in astonishment. Pigeons. Hundreds of them. Around the walls, on the cabinets, shelves, and furniture, all perched in silent vigil for the tall, pale, and ancient man lying on the bed, Nikola Tesla. Mr. Tesla? The maid checks his pulse, puts her ear to his nose. Just as she confirms he is indeed dead, the pigeons begin to coo, softly at first, and building in volume. Frightened, she runs for the door, starts all the pigeons aflutter, chaotic rushing towards the remaining open window. Some of them leave droppings as they go, a final benediction to their departed <coughs> master. The flight of the pigeons bursts from the 33rd floor window. Newsreel footage, the march of time, stirring newsreel footage music. The march of time. In New York City, over 200,000 are on hand to mourn the passing of Serbian-born inventor Nikola Tesla. There follows a newsreel montage. Important-looking people arrive at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York City. Included among these, many of the illustrious and famed in all fields of science and industry. Edward Armstrong, father of FM radio, Consul General Stanovich of Yugoslavia, Colonel David Starnoff, president of RCA, and Gano Dunn, president of J.G. White Engineering. Newsreel stock shot. Mailbags are emptied onto a table. Tributes and accolades numbering in the thousands pour in for the father of AC Current and our modern technological age. In addition to these, our First Lady, Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt, who had this to say on the day of his passing. Exterior White House lawn podium. Eleanor Roosevelt reads a prepared statement. All right. The President and I are deeply saddened to hear of the death of Mr. Nikola Tesla. We are grateful for his contribution to science and industry and to this country. End of newsreel footage. We dissolve to the interior cathedral of St. John the Divine Day, an open casket ceremony. A funeral hymn draws to a close and a massive congregation sits. Kenneth Barron O'Neill, 49, handsome and impeccably groomed, rises from the front pews and takes a place at the rostrum. His eyes are moist. My name is Kenneth Barron O'Neill. I've been asked to say a few words on account of my having known Mr. Tesla personally for the last 28 years. First, let me say he would have been deeply touched and moved to see you all here and for the glowing tributes which you have bestowed upon him today. <coughs> we cannot know, but it may be that there will be a time long from now when thought patterns are changed. The experts will look upon this era and they will bracket Nikola Tesla, with Da Vinci, Archimedes, Galileo, and Newton. Hotel New Yorker, lobby, day. Three FBI agents burst through the front doors with carts and trolleys and head to the front desk. The desk clerk turns to them. May I help you? Agent Frank Cornell flashes his badge. FBI, we need the keys to Tesla's room. In Mr. Tesla's room, uh, gladly. I'll inform the manager that you're here. 
The clerk gives him a key and the agents head to the elevators when Kenneth bursts through the lobby doors and intercepts them. Hey, what's the meaning of this? My God, his body's still warm! Colonels and the agents continue to the elevators, ignoring Kenneth. I demand to know what the hell you think you're doing! The agents board an elevator. Cornells puts out his arm to block Kenneth from joining them. Look, I'm Mr. Tesla. We know who you are, O'Neill. The elevator doors close. A chill sets on Kenneth, momentarily freezing him in his tracks. Another elevator doors open, or door opens, and he darts inside. Tesla's room. The agents burst into the large room, the suite of very practical and organized man, notwithstanding the abounding cages, all beautifully crafted, and wicker baskets containing feathers and droppings of absent birds. Kenneth runs up. Stop this! Don't you need a court order or something? Matters of national security, Mr. O'Neill, supersede any need for court orders. Tesla didn't leave a will, and he's got no immediate family. Now, if you'll excuse us. The agents tear through the room in their search for files. You can't just take this all! Surely you know Mr. Tesla's been since soliciting the War Department for years. He wanted them to have it. Well, then, your timing is perfect, isn't it? Let the inventor die in poverty, then plunder everything free of charge. Agent Doty finds a cache of documents and writings, something gooey on the container. Shit! Pigeon shit! It's disgusting! Mr. O'Neill, you want this invention to fall into Hitler's hands? Or worse, the communists? Serbian Yugoslav, wasn't he? Mr. Tesla has been a full American citizen for the past 52 years. He was a patriot! Relax, O'Neill. We're not going to turn everything... We're going to turn everything over to the Yugoslav embassy once we're done. So please, run along. Let us. Agent number four enters and steps up to Agent Cornell's. The hotel manager is with him. Sir, uh, we've located Mr. Tesla's uh, storage locker, Manhattan storage warehouse. About two tons of stuff there. Looks like the mother load. Right. Seal it off and call the office of alien property. Who's this? Uh, hotel manager, sir. It says there's something in the basement vault we should see. Hotel basement vault. The manager leads the agents through the walk-in vault to a large safety deposit box numbered 103. He unlocks it. Uh, Mr. Tesla he gave it to us as collateral on his rent. He said it was a prototype of his latest invention. Claim it was worth more than $10,000. That's it. There's that box. He points to a box on a shelf wrapped in brown paper. Muldoon, open it. No, no, it might explode. He said it would detonate if it was open. A security device he rigged up in the box. Said it contains a secret weapon of some sort. A death ray. You know about it? Never actually seen it. He refused to show it to anybody. He was waiting to unveil it at the World Peace Conference in Geneva. And you're telling me it would fit into that box? He told me it was about that big. All right. Call in the bomb disposal guys. And get somebody down from the War Department. <clears throat> Preferably an electronics expert. Exterior vacant lot behind the hotel, day. A bomb disposal expert carefully removes the brown paper wrapping from the box with long tongs. He's protected by a portable but cumbersome lead shield. Kenneth and the others stand well behind him. The hotel manager and staff beat a hasty retreat. A gathering crowd of curious onlookers is kept at a distance by police. The wrapping is off, revealing a handsome wooden chest bound with brass. The chest has a simple latch. The bomb guy attaches two hooks and two long wires, plays them out about 40 feet away, and crouches behind his shield. He tugs at the first wire. The latch opens easily. He takes a deep breath and pulls on the second wire, opening the lid. It falls open. Everyone gasps. No explosion. The bomb expert, FBI guys, hotel staff, and Kenneth cautiously edge toward the open box and look inside. Kenneth bursts with laughter. <laughs> Thank you. Inside the box, a radio with a logo emblazoned across the speaker grill, Marconi. Interior courtroom, 1915, day. A small courtroom in the Federal District Court, New York City. The towering, handsome, and dapper 59-year-old elder, Nikola Tesla, sits at the plaintiff's table, armed to the teeth with files and drawings. His eyes burn with a fierce intensity as he watches his lawyer, Lemuel Quigg, make the opening statement. And in our submission, Your Honor, it is our contention that the Marconi patent number 763772 has been anticipated by prior Tesla patent numbers 645, 576, 649, and 621. We therefore challenge the Marconi Company's claim to all the basic patent rights in the transmission of wireless messages and seek the annulment of this Marconi patent. At the defendant's table, a sullen Guillermo, uh, sorry, Guillermo Marconi, 41, sits with his three lawyers. Among the few journalists and visitors in the gallery, a young admirer, Kenneth O'Neill, 21, watches with rapt attention. 
And in addition, Your Honor, Mr. Tesla claims an infringement on his patent rights and seeks recompense. Tesla looks across the courtroom, attempts to stare down his opponent. Marconi avoids his stare. Exterior courthouse, New York City, 1915 day. Tesla hurries down the steps of the courthouse to the busy street, ably avoiding the cracks on the sidewalk. He is stylishly dressed and totes a lion's head walking stick. Kenneth bursts through the courthouse doors and runs to catch up with him. Mr. Tesla? Mr. Tesla, sir! Mr. Tesla, please, sir! Ah! The young man in the gallery! What do you think of my chances? Sir, I for one believe you are the true inventor of radio. I believe you should, you should win this case and get the recognition you truly deserve. Indeed, Mr. Um... Kenneth Baron O'Neill. <coughs> Kenneth reaches out his hand to shake. Though he wears his usual white gloves, Tesla refuses. You're not one of those uh, cultists, are you? Think I'm maybe from the planet Venus? <laughs> no, sir, I assure you, I'm not one of those. <laughs> so, Mr. O'Neill, you're confident I have a favorable outcome in my case against Mr. Marconi. Perhaps you're unaware of the conspiracy set against me by men of his stripe. Do not underestimate the larceny in so-called scientists, young men. Kenneth Baron O'Neill, yes, yes. <laughs> I believe I read your articles in Electrical World, perhaps. I have more yes? than a few articles on you, sir, but they uh, lack the insight that can only come from a first-hand account. A white pigeon flutters down and alights on Tesla's shoulder. Tesla is not surprised. It's as if he expected the bird. Ah, he perhaps, mutters in the side. Perhaps he seeks an interview with me. <laughs> the bird puts its beak in Tesla's ear. Tesla appears to listen to the bird's whispers, something serious. Kenneth doesn't quite know what to make of it. Only if it suits your convenience, sir. I'd be honored to spend some time with you, but that's not the prime reason I... White Pigeon flies off. This way. You can join me. Kenneth, stunned for a second, catches up to Tesla, who strides with a newfound sense of purpose. Mr. Tesla, if I may, I first want to express my... Well, I've followed your career for quite some time. I, uh... Sir, it was because of you I chose to enter the field. And I must say, I haven't regretted it, sir. Not one bit. I can only hope that someday I can accomplish just a fraction of what you've... There. Uh... <laughs> Tesla stops at the entrance to an alley. A few yards in, an ailing pigeon with a broken wing flops helplessly in the gutter. Tesla gingerly picks it up. It's just that I'd hoped to meet you one day, and now I'd... God, I planned what I was going to say, but... Don't fight this animal. Let it know you're a friend. Tesla is off again, back out onto the street, having handed the bird to Kenneth. Kenneth races after him, gently cradling the wounded bird in his hands. Sir, if I may, I think it's outrageous that you haven't reaped the rewards of your accomplishments. It's damned unfair. You tamed lightning. You gave us the electrical age. Everybody profits but the inventor. You are an inventor, Mr. O'Neill. In a minor way, sir. Electrical engineering's my forte. I'm, I'm on the board of the, uh... A true inventor must sacrifice all for his art. It is a high price, Mr. O'Neill. One can struggle a lifetime only to be betrayed and... Forgotten in the end. It's the ultimate jeopardy of our vocation. You know, this is not for every man. It's, for it's this not for most men. It's for this man, sir. I'm prepared to sacrifice. Ah, but can you be sure the outcome will be worth it? Sometimes we can never be sure. We must gamble and sacrifice anyway. Mm. Yes. yes. Well, perhaps you could write my story. Let's get started then. Your story? Waldorf Astoria Hotel Day. Tesla and Kenneth approach the entrance to the hotel. Tesla gestures, gestures to the wounded bird in Kenneth's uh, hands. I'd hide her if I were you. Kenneth obliges and tucks the bird into his coat. The doorman dutifully opens the door for them and casts a suspicious look at Kenneth. Tesla strides through the lobby toward the elevator. Kenneth takes in the splendor as he follows. In the elevator. Sam, the elevator operator, greets them as they board. Ah, uh, Mr. Tesla? Ah, uh, Sam, this is my guest, Mr. O'Neill. Writes articles about me. Uh, sir, the manager's out on the lookout for you. Uh, this time he's serious. Ah! A tiny piece of shit! Uh, he's threatening to evict you. Oh, you see, I give them uh, electrical age. This is the thanks I get. Elder Tesla's yes. room. Tesla and Kenneth enter the palatial suite. Though filled with things, everything is ordered, tasteful, and tidy. There are three large, beautifully crafted bird cages containing pigeons. Tesla hangs up his hat, coat, and walking stick. Now, let us examine our patient. Kenneth withdraws the wounded pigeon from his coat and hands it off to Tesla. Tesla sits at the table and sets the bird down. He reaches for a nearby canister marked veterinary and begins treatment. Please, Mr. O'Neill, do sit down. Kenneth doesn't sit. 
Mr. Tesla, before we go any further, I must explain the real reason that I accosted you. Oh? Yes, I, uh, I'm on the board of AIEE. A-I-E-E. -E. The American Institute of Electronics. Yes, I know what it is, Mr. O'Neill. On the board at your age, you must be a very clever young man. Well, sir, I was put in a position to put you forward to our committee, and they unanim unanimously agreed. You'd be the perfect candidate for this year's honors. Oh. The Institute oh. wishes to award you the Edison Medal. Edison! A ceremony will be held in your honor. Edison! Ha! Absolutely not! But, sir, this could reestablish your reputation. My reputation, let me tell you, is fine. I refuse to share the Nobel Prize with Thomas Edison. Why would you think I'd accept a medal after that, that schlubberly schlub? I'll tell you what I think. Give me a medal named after, give him a medal named after me. But, sir, it's to honor you. Mr. O'Neill, you propose to honor me with a medal which I could pin upon my coat and strut for a vain hour before the members and guests of your institute and everyone would enact the vacuous pantomime of honoring Tesla, then in fact, understand, they honor Thomas Edison, who did his utmost to squelch Sir, me. this would ensure your rightful place in the Let us forget the whole matter, Mr. O'Neill. I'll have nothing to do with his name, Edison. Lightning and thunder cracks outside. Tesla turns to the window and shouts to the god. Is that the best you can do? Ha! I can do better! Sir, if I may... Uh, well, the be... matter is settled, Mr. O'Neill. But why? Why? What, what is it about Edison? Why do you despise him? Why? Why indeed? Poor boy, you really are uninformed. Should I tell you my life story? Do you desire to write my biography? Uh, I'm a technical writer, yes, sir. Yes, yes. When I first came to America, my utmost desire was to meet your hallowed wizard of electricity. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I was willing to share my mind with him. I had all the answers, you see, to all the world's problems. New York Harbor, day. Men in mechanical cranes lift the great torch into place of the newly assembled Statue of Liberty. Super title, June 1884. Out in New York's upper bay, a passenger ship steams into port. Passenger ship continuous. Passengers crowd toward the rails, jostling to get their first glimpse of the famous city and its glorious statue. Among them, Nikola Tesla at 28. Towering, strikingly handsome, perfect mustache, and naturally dressed in suit and top coat. Like the others, he marvels in anticipation. My suitcase made a plan. The glow of the retreats done in the day of toil. Tesla's point of view, the Statue of Liberty. The workmen and cranes set the great torch in place. It yonder hastes new fields of life exploring. One simple revelation, one simple discovery, one simple invention. Interior, Tesla's mind, animation. Formulas and calculations reel by. Images form on the retinas of Tesla's eyes. Retro illustrations of the rotating magnetic field becoming an electric motor. Wing can lift me from the soil. A mere electric motor, a mere electric generator. Exterior stream day. Young Nico, seven years old, eyeballs his crude but precise litter water turbine. A wooden cylinder spins with the friction of the moving water. The motion fascinates him. Upon its track to follow, follow soaring. Dane, his 12 year old brother, suddenly appears beside him, admires his handiwork, and grins. Aren't you the clever one? My little brother is an inventor. I can see things, Dane. How things work, the, the little things in the air. Nico, God has blessed you with some... A great gift? You're meant for something big. Bigger than all of us. I have discovered it. The key to creating electrical power. The rotating magnetic field. Insert. A dog-eared black and white photograph of Niagara Falls. Superimposed Dane. Go to America. Nico, they will listen to you. It was all so clear I could tame a colossus! Passenger ship day. Tesla gazes intently at the dog-eared photo in his hand. New York Street day. Tesla ambles down the busy street, absorbing all he can. And who should be the perfect facilitator of these wonderful plans? Pearl Street Station day. Smokestacks jut from the roof of the power station, belching thick black coal smoke into the New York sky. A sign on the station reads, Edison Electric. Ooh, but Thomas Edison. Edison's office day. A jet of tobacco juice hits the rim of a spittoon. Thomas Alva Edison, late 30s, disheveled and unshaven, sprays chewing tobacco as he speaks. 
He's at his desk, on the phone, and in a panic. Edison's main man, the bearded and loyal Charles Batchelor, and his mousy secretary, Miss Finney, exchange worried looks. Yes, sir. I understand that. Yes, sir. I apologize, sir. We'll have a repairman down there. Uh, well, as soon as we can free one up. Yes, y yes, I know. Today, th uh, this afternoon. Yes, sir. I, I promise. Today. Yes, sir. Goodbye. No. Another young assistant runs into the room as Edison slams down the phone. Uh, Mr. Edison. You know who that was, don't you? Yes, sir. Goddamned owner of the shipping company. The owner. The SS Oregon was supposed to be in Europe two weeks ago. Yeah, yes, I know. Uh, Mr. Edison, sir. Well, don't we have anybody? God damn it. We must have somebody who can repair a ship's dynamo. Uh, please, sir. I can't put them off any longer. Damn it, what? It's J.P. Morgan's missus, sir. She says her distribution box has short-circuited and started a fire. She's hopping mad, sir. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! All right, yeah, well, get somebody down there. Who installed her system, anyway? Get him down there. Sir, you, you, you fired the original Oh, design. Christ almighty and Jesus. God, Murphy! I have 700 people under my employ in this godforsaken town, and you're telling me we don't have one person who can repair a simple household distribution box? Well, I could pull baits off the Wall Street job, but...